Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and in this Silhouette Print and Cut tutorial, I'll talk about the different types of files that you can use for print and cut. The two main categories for image files are raster and vector, and each type has its own strengths and weaknesses. The most important difference between the two categories has to do with resolution. Raster files are resolution dependent, and vector files are resolution independent. I'll show you a visual example of resolution dependence versus independence a little bit later in the video, but for now let's talk about the differences between how raster and vector files are created and what this means for us. Raster files are made from little building blocks of color called pixels, and if you zoom in far enough on any raster image, you'll be able to see each of the square pixels that makes up the image. The concentration of pixels in any given image will vary depending on how high the resolution of the image is, but in any case, the number of pixels in an image is limited, so the quality of the image depends on how high the resolution of the file is. This makes raster files resolution dependent. Vector files, on the other hand, are made up of paths, each of which has a fancy mathematical formula associated with it that tells the path how it's shaped and what fill color and or stroke weight and color it has. No matter how small or large you make a vector graphic, the mathematical equation will remain the same, so vector graphics can be scaled to any size without losing quality. This makes them resolution independent. Two of the most common resolutions for raster graphics are 72 DPI or PPI and 300 DPI or PPI. DPI stands for dots per inch and used to be exclusively used in print fields to give the concentration of dots of printer ink in a printed image. PPI stands for pixels per inch and is used to give the concentration of pixels per inch specifically for web-related images. However, these days DPI and PPI are used interchangeably. 72 PPI is standard web resolution. If you try to use a raster image with this resolution for print and cut, the printed image will most likely look fuzzy and low quality because the resolution isn't high enough. Sometimes you can shrink the image way down and it'll look better, but you'd need to have a 72 ppi image with pretty large dimensions in order for this to work well. For print and cut, and for most other print applications, you'll need a raster image file that's at least 300 ppi, which is the standard print resolution. Vector files are resolution independent, so any vector image can be scaled to as small as a postage stamp or as large as a billboard without losing quality. This is what makes them so great for using as cut files because the same file that you use to create a small paper embellishment for a card can also be scaled up, cut from vinyl, and used to make a sign or wall art. You can also save a vector as a raster file. For example, you can save an SVG file as a PNG or a JPEG, but keep in mind that if you do this, the resulting file will be resolution dependent and won't be able to be scaled to a size that's larger than the size that you save it as without losing image quality. Raster files, on the other hand, cannot be saved as true vector files. They can be embedded in vector files, but they won't actually be vector files. Raster file types include JPEGs, PNGs, and GIF files, which are the most common plus BMP files, which stands for bitmap, and TIFF files, which are less common, but file types that you may come across from time to time. You can work with any of these types of files in Silhouette Studio. The most common types of vector files that you'll work with in Silhouette Studio are SVG files and Studio files. The Studio file extension is the proprietary file type for the Silhouette Studio software. Other types of vector files that are commonly used for die cutting are GSD, DXF, and PDF files. If you have the business edition of Silhouette Studio, you will also be able to use the three types of vector files listed on the bottom right, and those are AI, which is the native file type for Adobe Illustrator, EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript, and CDR files, which are files created using the Corel Draw software. Okay, now let's look at a visual example of the differences between raster and vector files in Silhouette Studio. First, I'll open up the raster version of this circle graphic. The original graphic size is a little bit over 0.8 inches tall and wide, and is 72 ppi, so it's web resolution. When I open it in Silhouette Studio, the software automatically sizes it way down to 0.24 inches. Silhouette Studio does usually resize raster images to some extent when you open them in software, so keep this in mind when you're working with the files. 
Oftentimes the raster images that I create when I make clip art sets are a larger scale, so they'll look huge and need to be scaled down in Silhouette Studio. Let's see what happens when we try to make this graphic larger. With the image selected, I'll click on one of the corner handles and drag it out to scale the image up. But when I do this, you can see that the image eventually starts to look fuzzy and you can see pixelization happening all around the outside of the circle. This is the downside of resolution dependent images. You can usually scale them down without too much of a problem, but you can't scale them up too much without losing image quality. Now let's see what happens with the vector version of the image. The first thing to notice when I open and paste the vector version of the graphic into the document is that it comes in at exactly the size that it was designed at. No resizing in Silhouette Studio like we had with the raster image. Next, when I click and drag on the corner handle to size it up, you can see that I can make the image super big without losing any quality. The edges of the circle are still as crisp and clear as they were when it was at its original size. This is the upside of resolution independent vector images. They're infinitely scalable, so you can make them really small or super large without losing quality. So you might be asking why we would even want to use raster graphics for die cutting. Well, there are actually lots of reasons why they're great, especially for print and cut. Raster graphics are capable of rendering complex images with lots of detail, and pretty much any photograph or image that you see with that level of detail is a raster graphic. Also, there is so much raster clip art that can be used for print and cut, and these images can have lots of texture, soft gradients of color, and itty bitty small details, which make them more visually interesting. Raster file sizes are larger, but raster graphics are much stronger when it comes to the small details than vector images are. Vector graphics can also be great for print and cut, but their real strength is in their scalability. Their file sizes tend to be smaller, which is a plus, but they tend to have large areas of flat color as opposed to lots of texture and color. You can recolor vector graphics in Silhouette Studio though, which is another plus. In the next video, we'll go beyond a general overview of raster and vector graphics, and I'll show you some real world examples and how you can work with the different types of images to create margins and borders around them for things like stickers and card embellishments and sentiments. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you did, it would be great if you would give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.